Hi, good evening everyone. Thanks very much for joining. My name's Kate McKenzie and I'm Knowledge Transfer Manager at AHDB. And tonight we're going to be bringing you a webinar which is going to be looking at which genetic rant ranking to use, um, PLI, SCI or ACI. And this is just based on the new autumn carbon index that has recently been launched. So we'll be able to give some, um, some new information about how to use it. Our presenters this evening are going to be Fern Pearson and Marco Winters from AHDB. And we've got about 115 people that have booked on. So um, thank you very much for joining. Uh, Fern and Marco are going to be running through their presentations, which will take about half an hour to 40 minutes because they're both going to be giving a bit of input. Um, Marco will be going first and then Fern will be going. So everybody's going to be muted during the webinar. But if you'd like to ask a question, then you can type it into your question box. And this is on the small control panel that's on the right hand side of your screen. Um, I'm going to be asking Marco and Fern your questions at the end of the presentation. But if there is something that comes up that you'd like to ask whilst we're going through, then type it in and we'll be able to ask things as well if it's about, um, about a specific part that we're covering. So um, put them in and we'll definitely get around to them, whether it's straight away or at the end of the session. I'm going to be in the background um, working to try and keep things running smooth as possible. If we do have any technical difficulties, then just bear with me, um, but I'm sure that we won't do. So without further delay, uh, I'll introduce Marco. Um, so Marco, thank you very much for joining us this evening. I wondered if you might be able to just start us off with a bit of an introduction um, on yourself, please. OK, thank you, Kate. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so my name is Marco Winters. I'm uh, head of animal genetics at HDB Dairy. And the topic for tonight, as Kate already said, is really to talk about the new genetic indexes that we updated in August uh, 2018 with the last proof run. So what I'll do in my bit is to run you through um, why we developed these genetic indexes and really why do we need genetic ranking indexes? Because um, some breeders may like to look at individual traits, but why do we decide to, to come up with these, uh, these various indexes? And actually, who decides about the makeup of these indexes? Because we do get that, that question asked a few times. Then I'll go into a little bit more detail about which economic ranking indexes we have in the UK, and in particular, which traits they are focusing on. Because there is some differences between the, the PLI, which is an all year round calving index, our spring calving index, and our autumn calving index, the SCI and ACI. Then I'll explain a little bit more about which indexes uh, we believe you should be looking at. Uh, to not confuse yourself, really it is focusing on one particular index rather than trying to find a bull that ranks well in all the indexes, uh, which could be of interest, but is very time consuming and may just confuse you. And then finally, um, Fern will also be talking about a little bit of detail around some of the, the KPIs and what information is available. So starting off then, um, just a, an introductory slide, just to remind you why we need these profit indexes, these economic ranking indexes, PLI, SCI, and ACI. And really the reason behind it is because we have a lot of different traits currently available. Uh, and the, the, uh, the chart in your screen highlights the vast amount of information that we now do have on a, a range of breeds. There's, um, well, ranging from the Holstein, British Friesian, Shorthorn, Ayrshire, Jersey, Guernsey, Brown, Swiss, Montbelliard, Fleckfee. For all of those, we now provide genetic evaluations in the UK. And for each of those, we then have a number of traits to allow you to really fine tune the selection of those animals. And it does mean that breeding actually has become uh, relatively straightforward because we can really tailor and make the type of genetics and the animal that we need or belief that we need for the future. But it also poses a challenge because it can be an overload of information if uh, if you call to the the well the vast amount of information that is available, and that's really why pref profit rankings uh, were developed initially and and why we keep on working with those, because what it does it it maximizes the uh, the gain that we can that we can achieve by looking at all those indexes with minimum effort. Um, they optimize the selection for a range of those traits all at once. And now later on, I'll explain a little bit more and give you some detail on exactly what I mean by that. But, but essentially, it means that once you've got a, a high ranking PLI, SCI or ACI bull, 
those bulls will have been pre-screened, if you like, for a lot of the interesting trades or, or trades that really make you profit on farm, and and ultimately saves you a lot of hassle to uh, to try and uh, figure out which are the good ones. What we're not saying though is that you should just focus on number one, two, and three on the list. Um, I think there's a range of bulls that that can make up a, a good PLI, and really within the top PLI, SCI or ACI bulls, you should be looking for the detail. A little bit more about well which traits really do you want to focus on and, and like I said we'll come back to that later on in this webinar. So as I said the last revision was in August 2018 and uh, tonight we'll give you a bit more of an overview of what happened. Then a little bit about well who is behind these indexes so it's not just Fern and myself who make up the, uh, the indexes but it's a, a, a joint effort with the industry and researchers. So we use uh, an economic model developed by SIUC in Scotland and Abacus Bio Limited in New Zealand. And that economic model really allows us to model whole farms and say, well, what is the benefit of improving fat versus improving longevity or versus improving fertility? And for all of those traits, we then can put relative economic values on and therefore balance really the, the selection that we want to apply. Those results of that economic model are then discussed, and uh, we've, we've discussed probably the update uh, three times before they were introduced in August with our uh, genetics advisory forum. And the genetics advisory forum is an industry forum that is made up of industry representatives who have, have got an interest in breeding. So it ranges from the herd books to the, uh, the breeding companies, but also obviously includes farmers. And, and, uh, and really we're very, interested and very keen to really take their views on board before we launch something like this. So it's a, it is a, an index that's, that's well thought out before we introduce it. So why have we started looking at different indexes? Because for many, many years in the UK, we've had the PLI as our primary index. Uh, but what we are also now seeing is that the, the farming systems in the UK are, are evolving and becoming uh, well, probably more pronounced and you, are, you may be familiar with some of the work that we're doing on optimal dairy systems, and Fern will talk about that a little bit later on. But as part of that, we also did a survey to see where are farmers going and, and how is the industry shifting. So today we find that about 74% uh, of the industry is still an all-year-round calving system, which is suitable for the PLI. But we also see that a, a bigger proportion of farmers are now looking at a block calving system. Uh, either a spring or autumn block calf or a, a split block calving system. And the uh, the signals that we're picking up in the industry is that there's an interest of, of moving from all year round probably a bit more towards an autumn calving system. So therefore autumn calving became uh, something that we want to, to focus on uh, since we already had PLI and SCI in our system. Um, but having said that all year round is, is still the dominant uh, segment and probably will remain so for the foreseeable future. So the question uh, we then also said, well, can we already identify genetic preferences when we look at the different calving systems? And through the insemination data that we collect from the milk recording companies, CIS and NMR, uh, we, we can have a pretty good idea. And I'll, I'll go through some of the traits of fertility, production, lifespan, and somatic cell count to show you how different farming systems are, are choosing different types of genetics. Uh, and the data analysis is done on just over a million insemination records that we collected in 2017. So from that, we can have a, a good idea really of the genetic preferences. And the first trait that uh, I'll show to you is the fertility index trend. So what this slide is now showing you is the, the average genetic merit of the uh, inseminations that took place between January, 1st of January, 2017, up until the end of December, 2017. And well, the, the, the signals you can pick up that is uh, well in general we're making genetic progress so on a daily basis we can see that genetics are improving uh, so with the the genetics that were used in january uh, were not as good as the genetics we ended up using in december and that's a signal really of how fast genetic progress currently is and that's largely due to the genomics element around about 70 percent of insemination in the uk are now with genomic young sires and we know that their genetics are accelerating very rapidly but the two bits that really are uh, for tonight to highlight is that we do very clearly see that the spring block calving herds are using a very different types of genetics uh, to the rest of the all year round calving uh, herds. And similarly, we also now see that the autumn block calving herds are picking a, a slightly different type of bull, uh, in particular when it comes to fertility. Now remember that underlying this, obviously it's a bit of a diluted picture, 
because all year round calving herds will still be inseminating in the spring and, and autumn blocks. Um, so really the peaks we're seeing here probably underestimate the, the real preference for the spring and autumn block calving herds in terms of fertility. Uh, so they are definitely looking for more fertility in the bulls than an all year round calving system. Similarly, when we then go to milk, fat and protein, this is a, a bit of a, a messy slide, but I'll just talk you through it. So the top line here, we're looking at milk yields. And what we see there is very clearly that our spring block calving herds and our autumn block calving herds have got a slightly um, lower threshold when it comes to milk kilograms. They're not looking for the same amount of yield as an all year round calving system is. This is not unexpected, but clearly is visible in this graph. Similarly, when we look at fat percent, definitely those herds are looking for a higher fat percent uh, type of genetics, both in spring and in autumn. And again, when it comes to the protein percentage, a similar sort of picture that really the spring and autumn block calving herds are looking for a higher components. And in particular, the spring block calving herds are really putting a lot of emphasis on components. Then somatic cell count and lifespan. Uh, so first of all, somatic cell count. So here we're looking for a, a negative trend. So negative is desirable in, in somatic cell count. But what we see here is actually that a spring block and autumn block calving herds are well, maybe less critical, and we're not quite sure whether this is by uh, design or, or just an artifact of the bulls that are being made available to them or that they're choosing to use. Because uh, obviously, somatic cell count is just as important in the spring as an autumn block calving herd, but we do see some differences. Now, interestingly, when it comes to lifespan, uh, we, we don't really pick up any signals. Uh, clearly, all uh, herd types are looking for better lifespan. And I think this is an important. Uh, Point to make. And then finally, maintenance costs. So here we're looking at maintenance, um, which is based on the live weight of the animals. And we have got a, a desire really to bring down the, the live weight or at least hold the, the increase of the size of the cows that we breed in the UK. And clearly we do see here that again, our spring and autumn block calving herds are looking for a smaller type animal than the all year round calving systems. Well, what that all means in terms of PLI is that clearly spring and autumn block calving herds are, are not looking for necessarily the highest PLI bulls because they are looking for a different mixture of genetics to really make their herds profitable. With this in mind, really, I think we, we knew that we had to address, first of all, we addressed the spring block calving herds within the SCI that was introduced in 2014. But then this year, we decided to also introduce our an autumn specific block calving index, the ACI to really address the needs of, of the herds uh, that are looking for that system. So as a recap, um, so we know that we've got different farming systems in the UK, all year round for a block calving system. And insemination data already tells us that the genetics do differ uh, between the different systems. And therefore we, we really wanted to address that. Well, what, which index have we got? Uh, first of all, I'll just show you one slide with a summary slide and then I'll go into a bit more detail. Uh, but the revamped PLI that we introduced in August uh, is a profitable lifetime index. It's a within breed index, so we can't compare the PLI of a Jersey, for example, against the PLI of a Holstein. And similarly, the PLI of a Frisian is very different to the PLI of a Holstein. So it's, it's very important to bear in mind that this is a within breed specific ranking. Uh, the new index now includes the new traits, calf survival and lameness advantage as uh, important traits. And we also added body condition score in the PLI. The revamp has meant that we're putting a slightly more uh, weighting on yield, but still very much a strong component or a strong emphasis on, on components uh, and health traits. And, and definitely the health traits we know are important in the UK systems and we wanted to maintain that. Then we've got our revamped SCI, the Spring Calving Index. And this, unlike the PLI, is in a crossbreed ranking. So what that does mean is that a, an SCI of a Jersey can directly be compared against an SCI of a Holstein, similarly against the SCI of a Frisian or an Ayrshire. And that really makes it very attractive for herds that are crossbreeding, because uh, immediately you can see oh, where are these bulls well, showing a, a better genetic for a particular trait or a, a worse genetic trait. Um, but equally, when it comes to the overall economic merit of that bull, you can look at the SCI as an, an optimal economic index to, to really decide which bulls are going to give you that. The SCI revamp that we introduced this time around uh, has become a little bit more extensive. So 
less emphasis on milk yield but more emphasis on components because that's clearly what's coming through from the uh, the type of genetics that those herds are using but also from the feedback that we were getting back from the industry since our launch in 2014 which we've addressed uh, very much we want to keep that strong focus on fertility and we also want to maintain that smaller animal for that system like PLI we've introduced calf survival and lameness advantage in body condition score and then finally we've introduced now our ACI the autumn calving index and similar to SCI this is an across breed ranking so when you look at the, the bull list on our website or the fact sheets as Fern will talk about later on ACI and SCI do sit next to each other because we use the same underlying uh, genetic reference to to compare uh, bulls against each other so it's an across breed ranking uh, similarly to all the others we emphasize fertility health traits and composition and compared to the PLI the ACI will have more fertility and a little bit more of milk uh, fat and protein percentages compared to the SCI however it's uh, slightly more production based because we do know that the autumn calving herds typically uh, are interested in a bit more production than a spring block calving herd. So which index should you use? Um, well, it depends on what system you operate. So if you're a spring block calving herd, it's easy. You look at the SCI uh, to decide which genetics you should be using in your herd. If you're an autumn block calving herd, and this is really talking about herds that calve all their animals within a, let's say a three months window. And, and so it's, it is a, well, a tighter calving than, than maybe what uh, what we see in a, in a well, traditional system. Well, if you're not in block calving system, you should look at the ACI. And then finally, if you're all year round calving, then the question may be, well, do you crossbreed in your herd? If you're not crossbreeding, then it's easy. Uh, you look at the PLI because that's a within breed ranking and that really is uh, designed for an all year round calving system. But if you are crossbreeding, then maybe it's useful to look at the ACI as an alternative. Uh, ACI and PLI are similar, but maybe within the ACI, look for the higher production bulls uh, to, to emphasize a little bit more their production need in an all year round calving system. But ACI allows you to make a cross breeding selection and therefore should make your life a lot easier. So a bit more detail then about what these indexes do. First of all, the PLI, it's an all year round calving system. As I explained, it's within braids and our focus remains on the manufacturing contract, so it is based on fat and protein, uh, but we do recognize that still about 50% of the milk today goes into liquid type contracts. So we, we are not penalizing perhaps the high milk bulls as, as severely as we have done in the past. And you may have seen that when you looked at the rankings. Well, what do these top PLI bulls transmit? And this is a lot of detail, and I'm not gonna go into the, uh, the, the full detail of it, uh, but but really what it is showing, looking at the genomic young sires that are available today and grouping them by the top 10%, 10 to 30, et cetera, and then the worst 10%, you can see that the bulls that rank the highest on PLI, so top 10% bulls, are higher milk, uh, definitely are higher kilograms fat and are higher kilograms of protein than our bad PLI bulls. But in terms of components, these are all the high, also the highest uh, fat and protein percentages. So within the PLI, we still want to maintain that, that emphasis on improving fat and protein percent. We're interested in reducing maintenance because we want to breed smaller animals, which are more efficient. And therefore, what we see in the top PLI bulls is that they are generally smaller than our, our worst uh, PLI sires. Lameness advantage, we're looking for a positive figure. So these, the top PLI bulls will be better at reducing lameness in their daughters compared to the worst PLI bulls. Somatic cell count and mastitis, we're looking for negatives because we want to reduce the incidence. And so the top PLI bulls are lower on somatic cell count and better for, for mastitis. Calf survival, on the other hand, we want to improve calf survival. So our top PLI bulls are better on average than the, uh, the worst PLI ones. Lifespan, quite clearly, these are better in improving longevity of their daughters by about 0.6 of a lactation. So it's, it's not insignificant. They're higher for fertility. Uh, the direct calving ease, so this determines whether the bull can be used on maiden heifers or not, is fairly similar across the board because we, uh, we don't put a lot of emphasis on it, but it is in PLI. But clearly, maternal calving ease so says, well, are these cows themselves good dams or do they give birth quite easily or more easily? Uh, the top PLI bulls are clearly uh, superior to the, the worst PLI sires. 
And when it comes to the type traits, well, others are fairly balanced across the, the whole range. Um, it is included into PLI, but uh, clearly there's a lot of good other pools out there. Alongside the selection on um, lameness advantage, we also do see that our foot and legs are improving in the top PLI bulls, and ultimately that also results in a higher type merit. Now, another way of displaying is, and this is how we've ex expressed it in our fact sheets, which you can also find online, is by looking at the relative weightings between them. Uh, and I'm not going to go into all the detail, but clearly all of the traits that we're interested in, uh, we do see a significant improvement across the board for our high PLI sires. Again, it's a within breed ranking. Now, SCI is specifically designed for a spring block halving system. Uh, we've, we've set a targeting around 6,000 kilograms of milk. So they're, they're clearly lower than our all year round calving systems, but, um, um, but, but do need that milk to be produced from grass. It's an across breed ranking with a strong emphasis on fertility and milk components. So clearly when you compare that against the PLI and later on, I'll show you a bit of a summary. We do see that fat and protein percent are higher and clearly milk yield is lower than it was on the PLI. All of the health traits are good, with fertility index in particular a strong emphasis because we do know that block calving systems do requ require that uh, fertility to come through. And then uh, lameness advantage, some of the type traits may be less emphasis on uh, there will be less pressure on those animals. Maintenance, we're looking for smaller animals, so this is a reverse sign than the way we present it, but that's just for our presentation purposes. And a higher body condition score. And then finally, our autumn calving index. So now we're looking for a specific block calving system in autumn, targeting around seven and a half thousand kilograms of milk. So it is higher than our uh, SCI system. Um, and these herds will be doing some additional feeding in the winter time when the cows are housed. So feed costs will be higher than the, the SCI system. It is an, a crossbreed ranking, as I already mentioned. It maintains a strong emphasis on fertility and, and milk components. And really in terms of what it does, it lies somewhere in between the PLI and SCI in terms of uh, the, the bulls that it pulls up. So similarly to, to what you've seen before, all of the traits are improving, uh, with particularly emphasis on, on the fertility traits um, and, and also maintenance. So as a summary, to put it all uh, together on one slide, this is the, the comparison. Now that information is also available on the fact sheet that you can find on our website. And when this webinar becomes available online, you will be able to review it in a bit more detail. But what you can see is that our SCI bulls, as I said already, are lower in milk yield compared to our PLI bulls, uh, but are better in milk fat and protein percentages uh, compared to the PLI, although all of them will improve it ultimately. Fairly similar in terms of somatic cell kind of mastitis, uh, all of the systems we want to improve that trait. Similarly for lifespan, as I showed you earlier also, that all of them have got a strong emphasis as well as calf survival. But when it comes to fertility, uh, certainly the block calving systems, we do want to put a higher emphasis on fertility compared to PLI. Lameness advantage is very similar between the two of them, or between the three of them. Uh, type traits uh, within the PLI, there's a higher emphasis on, on type compared to the other systems. Uh, and when it comes to maintenance, the SCI will be looking for a smaller animal compared to a PLI system and an animal that carries more body condition. So in summary, then to, to wrap up my bit, um, well, remember that the profit index really is there to make your life easier. Um, we wanna maximize gains with minimum effort. So look out for the highest ranking bulls within all, all of those rankings. First of all, determine which index you want to use. And as I said at the beginning, really try to focus on just one index. Uh, Cause otherwise it, it probably will get much more confusing and much more difficult. So if you decided you're a, all year round calving system and PLI will be for you. If you know that you're autumn or spring block calving, then look for the ACI or SCI to choose your bulls. Next, set a minimum level uh, for whichever economic index you decided to use to narrow your selection. And this is really to make your life easier. And as a, a guideline, uh, this is what we would currently recommend. So a minimum at least of 400 PLI uh, and that this is within a Holstein breed, so you do have to look at uh, at your own breed, but look at the, if you say, the, the top 50% bulls available, which you can find on a website. ACI about 300 minimum and SCI about 200 minimum. Now for genomic young size, you want to raise that level by about 150 points, so 550 for PLI, uh, 450 for ACI, etc. 
And this is as of the August rank run, because every run, because of the genetic progress, that level does change. But these are some guidelines for the moment. Well, if you're crossbreeding, uh, apply exactly the same criteria. Don't do anything different. But when it comes to choosing your bulls, you, you probably, well, you obviously want to look at the best ranking bulls of that breed of interest uh, within the ACI and SCI. And then finally, focus on the traits that you want to improve most in your herd. So once you decided on the, the benchmark for your PLI, ACI, and SCI, then look out for the individual traits that really you want to improve. So whether that's lifespan or fat percent or lameness or fertility. And then use the herd genetic report as a guide to, to find out which of your uh, traits really require more attention. So this really is the introduction that I want to give before I hand over to Fern uh, to talk about some of the web tools that are available. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Marco. Um, just before we hand over to Fern, did just have a question through from Charlie um, asking about how does EBI compare to SCI or the ACI? OK, um, so all of those indexes obviously are specifically designed for a grazing system. Uh, but what we do know is that the SCI and ACI, if you like, but certainly the SCI is very much focused on a UK system. So we specifically looked at the economics on the UK system. Uh, first and foremost, what we do know is that the milk contracts are quite different in Ireland and New Zealand compared to the UK. So it doesn't make sense for us to breed for a system that uh, rewards how well the milk get, is valued in Ireland or New Zealand. So the UK index is a uh, is designed specifically for UK conditions and UK economic conditions. Now, when it comes to how similar are these, um, so if you look at the top 15 or 20 um, SCI bulls, well, you will see uh, the number one EBI bull in there, currently in Ireland, the number one EBI Holstein bull in there. Um, and similarly, you will find the number one and two BW bull in our SCI ranking. So they, they're very similar in terms of the attributes you're looking for. Um, and but uh, well, the important point, I guess, is to to remember that really we want to breed for what's economically interesting in the UK, which is what we do in our index uh, versus the others. Now, by all means, you may want to look at those, but but also cross check against how those bulls rank on SCI, because that really tells you what they're going to do here. OK, that's brilliant. Thank you. Well, we've not had any more questions in yet. We're still going to have time at the end of the session. So in a second, we'll just hand over to Fern. And um, just as a quick reminder that the webinar this evening is going to be recorded. So it's available on the AHDB YouTube channel. And also earlier in the year, we did have Marco and Fern doing another webinar, which was about the new trait indexes that we've spoken about a little bit this evening and also the addition of genetics to the optimal dairy systems calculator. And Fern also did a demo of the herd genetic report. So it's, if those are things that you might like a bit more information on, then you can see the recording of the other webinar um, that we did earlier of the year as well. So just bear with us two seconds and we're just gonna pass over now to Fern. OK, that's great, Fern. We're just waiting for your screen to come up on um, on the screen now. So over to you. Could you give us a quick intro on yourself first, please? Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Fern Pearson. I have been around for about as long as the SCI has been. So I joined HDB working with Marco in the animal genetics team in 2014. Um, assist Marco with the, the genetic evaluations, both the genomic and the uh, national genetic evaluations. But I tend to uh, get a bit more involved in the tool development and web development side of um, what we do as well. So um, I'm quite looking forward to taking you through um, the tools that we've been developing so far uh, this year. Um, but what I thought I'd do is just start off with um, taking you through the um, the differences you'd see on our fact sheets compared to when you look at the PLI of a bull and the SCI of a bull, along the similar thread to what uh, Marco was talking about earlier um, in the webinar. So on the screen you can see just now is the, the PLI fact sheet, and we're going to compare that to the uh, SCI and ACI fact sheet. So the first thing you'll notice is in the top left-hand corner, we've got 
the different indexes there. So you can see their overarching value for those indexes. Um, and I'd just make the point that I did just pick the, the top daughter proven bull on our ACI list. There is no other reason that I've uh, selected this bull here. Um, but the next thing to note between the two sheets is the fact that on the PLI sheet, we do specify the genetic base that that bill is being expressed on. So we would expect kind of any proof that you see for you to be either comparing Holsteins with Holsteins or you to be told which genetic base that bill is being expressed on. Because if you're comparing that PLI value of a Holstein bill with a Jersey bill, it's not the same value, it's, it's, it's misleading. Um, so that's the main point to make. Um, and the reason we refer to the Holstein base, we, we do rebase um, our genetics every five years um, or four years. Um, so that we are we are taking um, account of all the genetic progress that we're making in the national herd, and right now it's this genetic base for the Holsteins is taking the average of all Holstein cows born in 2015. So that's where the the zero sitting at the moment. Um, so you'll notice the SCI ACI fact sheet doesn't have this on it, and this means that we've got slightly different figures for a few of our PTAs on the sheet. So our production figures. On the left, you've got that expressed on the Holstein base. On the right, you have this bill expressed compared to all other breeds of uh, the dairy, bill, dairy animals that we, we evaluate. Um, the other figures to note as well are somatic cell count, lifespan, fertility, and maintenance. They're all expressed on a, on a breed-specific base when we're looking at the PLI and then they're expressed on a, a, an across-breed base within the ACI. Those other figures that don't change, they're just left on the, um, the across-breed base. We don't rebase them for the, the PLI. That's why they don't change. But just to give you a little bit of background of why the figures are different and why we do try and really hit home the reason um, we want you to look at just Holsteins for the PLI um, and, and make sure that when you're looking at bill fact sheets and, and bill proofs in, um, in your catalogues that you're making sure that you're comparing apples with apples uh, so you're getting the right information there. So I'll just take you through uh, what I'm meant to be talking about for the rest of the webinar and I'll just give you a quick recap on the optimal dairy systems. We did go through this a little bit back in April but I'll just give you a quick review. So the key ones that we we're kind of focusing on our, our the enterprise KPIs of which uh, genetic merit is one of them. But from this list, you can see that in their own way, we've sort of given um, each system uh, a, a key performance indicator for measuring fertility of the herd, for measuring output of the herd, so production of the herd, as well as production from input to the herd, and also overhead costs. So there's a way for measuring all of these areas and comparing yourself against your contemporaries that are also operating the same system as you. So again, tonight, we're just going to be focusing on genetic merit. And as with last time, we've got Autumn Block, we recommend using, well, up until August, it was uh, the, uh, the PLI. Now that we've got the ACI, we'd like to use the ACI. Um, however, we're still rolling it out for the females. So um, with the, the KPI calculator, it's still going to be looking at PLI until December when we roll it out for the females. We're just doing a bit of a staged rollout. Spring block, again, it's going to be using looking at the SCI, and then your all your round calvers are going to be using the PLI. So as I said, coming soon we're hopefully going to have autumn block or ACI for the females uh, within the herd genetic report and the calculator that I'm about to take you through. So first one is uh, for measuring uh, your genetic merit for your KPI is the herd genetic report. This has been around for quite a little while and it's available for all milk recording or fully milk recording herds because they're contributing their data to the UK genetic and genomic evaluations, we're able to give these herds back the genetic proof of, of all of their cows in the herd. Um, as Kate said earlier, if you're looking for a bit more in-depth background on the herd genetic report and how to input the data into the 
KPI calculator, you can look at the webinar that we did in April that's on the YouTube channel. But tonight I'm just going to go through a, a quick run through of, of what you, you'd be looking to input um, for your values. So I've just uh, taken our demo herd that sits on the website uh, for this one. And for our all year round, once you've logged in, you would be selecting the Holstein breed here under PLI. You'd then scroll to your breed standards table where you're able to benchmark your herd against all other milk recording herds um, that are contributing their data to the genetic evaluations. Here you can identify where your herd is sitting by the yellow highlighted box for PLI and that gives you your percentile for your KPI for genetic merit. Um, another note to make of this one is that the, not only we are focusing on the PLI, SCI and ACI tonight, but the herd genetic report is great for identifying and highlighting, as in this table here, um, the strengths and weaknesses of your herd. Um, so you can see, although this um, herd's in the, the top 10% for PLI, so generally across the board, it is a very well-functioning herd. Um, you can see that, um, or what you might not see is the uh, the boxes for the, the PTAs for fat percent and protein percent, they're quite low. So that might be something if, if this herd was, say, on a cheese contract, that may be something that they'd want to look at addressing with their next breeding decisions for the herd. Um, so going back to, say, the, the landing page of, of signing into your herd genetic report, if you're a spring block caver, you would instead select the SCI. And this, again, would take you through to your your reports, scroll down the page to your benchmarking table, identify the SCI column, and this herd, it is the same herd as I've used earlier, but actually they're sitting in the top 25% for SCI if they were a spring block calving instead of all year round calving. So again, their input for the KPI calculator would be 25 there. Um, and then finally, for autumn block, currently it's the same process as um, your all year round calvers. But as I said, in December, we're really hoping to roll out having ACI included in uh, the herd genetic report. So that would sit within uh, the SCI report. So it's, it's going to be displayed very similar to how we already display the, um, the bull fact sheets on the website. So for anyone who is fully milk recording um, and it, with NMR, CIS or Dale Farm, you can sign up our, or request your herd genetic report um, and even allow third party access to it. The information we need is uh, an email address, your milk recording number, trading name and a, and a postcode. Um, and if you send it to the email that's on the screen at the moment, then we can get that one set up for you. Um, and when we refer to uh, fully milk recording um, herds, it's with regard to recording with an ICAR approved scheme. Um, a minimum of five times within a lactation. Okay. Um, so the kind of the, the newer part of, of the webinar is uh, the genetic merit calculator. So last time I took you guys through this, we didn't really have a method for non-milk recording herds to um, calculate their, their herd's genetic merit for their KPI. And this is uh, what we've launched in the last couple of months um, in order to assist with that, that calculation. So the way to access this is through the Optimal Dairy Systems part of the HDB Dairy website. Once you've selected the genetic merit uh, calculator, you'll be taken to this landing page where you select which calving system you're operating from the drop down menu uh, shown on the screen just now. Once you've done that, uh, you'll get taken through to uh, another page. I've sort of pre-populated this page, so um, when you first land on it, um, it will be it will be blank from say the bull search bar down. Um, but you'll have a an indication of which calving system you've selected. So today we've I've selected the the autumn calving system. There's a start button there as well, so you can get taken back to that drop-down menu if you're just having a little look around and, and seeing what's going on with the tool. And there's also a permalink that will appear um, once you've input um, a bull and you've populated how many daughters he has in your herd. That permalink will appear. It's unique to your list. And if you save that to your search bar, 
that means that your list will be saved. You don't have to repopulate the list every single time you want to use it. And it means that in the future, you can just, as you're going to update your, your KPIs, um, you can just alter the number of daughters that are in the herd for that bill, or if you've used new bills, add them into the list. So I'll just take you through a few more um, features of, of the calculator. We've got a search, bill search bar where you can input either the bill's name or his herd book number, but you can also select which breed he is. So that will uh, significantly reduce down the number of bills that you're seeing in the list. Once you've identified the bill that uh, you've used in your herd, if you click the add button, he'll then be added to, to the main list. And if we scroll down the list that I've uh, created, I've generated again um, this one from a, a, an example herd. We go all the way to the bottom and at the very bottom, there's a statement that tells you that this herd sits in the 35th percentile. So that's the top 35th percentile. So that's the number that you would input into your KPI calculator. It is a very rough estimate because it's only taken into consider in consideration the, the bull's contribution to your herd. But again, it's it's something that you can use to compare with your with your contemporaries when you're inputting your, your key performance indicators. So I thought I'd put together a little bit of a, a summary slide for this one because I know it can be a bit um, sometimes a bit confusing going through it quite quickly. So the main question you want to ask yourself is do you milk record and if it's a yes then you have access to the herd genetic report um, within that report you can look at the PLI if you're all year round SCI if you're springbok calving and from December 2018 you'll be able to look at the ACI if you're autumn block calving in order to get your herd's genetic merit if you're not milk recording that's still okay we can help you out there Go along to the genetic merit calculator on the optimal dairy systems uh, part of the HDP dairy website and we'll be able to help you calculate your herd's genetic merit again in december when we launch aci for females the um, calculator will also be updated to include when you select an autumn calving system it will include the bulls aci at the moment we haven't included that because we don't have the female side for the herd genetic report at the moment but that will all come in a couple of months time so uh that's uh all of the new information from me so we just thought we'd leave you with a few key points to take away uh number one is um there are uk specific indexes available um as of august 18 um, and an, a, a real key point is the PLI is expressed on a within breed um, base. Uh, please don't go comparing your Holsteins with your Ayrshires with your jerseys. Um, it's it's not it's not fair in the uh, on the other breed on all the breeds that you're comparing there. Your SCI, your ACI, they're expressed on an across breed base, so that's absolutely fine. Fire away, compare as many different breeds as you want on that one. Number two, there's a lot of genetic traits now available for selection. Um, so there's quite a lot to take into consideration there. And as Marco's um, covered previously, these indexes are there to try and help to minimize the effort that you put into maximizing the, the, the output you see from your herd. Um, and another key point is we've now got the lameness advantage and the calf survival in there too. So those are some really good traits to be keeping an eye on for breeding into your into your herd. And the final point is uh, the herd genetic report is is available to use for identifying areas of of to strengthen in your herd or or areas that you that you're already kind of doing really well on and you want to keep that keep that pressure on there and for those herds that are not milk recording you can still have an indication of where your herd is sitting using the genetic merit calculator um, I'd just like to say uh, thank you for everyone for joining for us tonight and if there's um, any questions that you have then Marco and I would be happy to take them just now that's brilliant thank you Fern um, we've got a quick one just um, on the uh, the traits and the herd genetic report since you've just been covering those Fern um, question from Amy just asking do the herd genetic reports have any genetic comparisons um, in relation to TB resistance or resilience we haven't included um, the TB advantage um, trait in the herd genetic report 
Um, currently, it's only available um, for genomically tested female, I'm going to say Holsteins, and Marco might correct me, but I think that's right at the moment. Um, any farmer who's uh, genomically testing their females will get their TB Advantage figure back with their genomic evaluation of that female. Um, it is something that we would like to include in the future. Um, it's on our development list. Um, we just need to find the time to uh, to get around to doing it because there's there's quite a lot going on in the background at the moment. Okay, all right, thank you. Right, we're going to go to a question from Rhys. Um, I think Marco's had a look at this one already. I'm just going to uh, give it a read out. So Rhys has asked, um, with the crossbreed index like ACI and SCI, do we need to crossbreed at all if we're just going on index alone and not fussed about what breed we use? Um, and also, should it matter that many of the top ACI and SCI bulls are not born in those calving periods? So, um, Marco Orphan, would either of you mind just adding a little bit to that, please, for Rhys? I'm going to unmute Marco. Are you there, Marco? Yes. Yeah. I'm here now. Yeah. So I guess so. Two questions, if I got that correctly. So the first one is: Does it matter if you're not crossbreeding? Should you still be using SCI or ACI? And the answer is definitely yes. Uh, those indexes have been designed specifically for the system, first and foremost. And so it does mean that an SCI is is really giving you the best choice for a spring block calving and ACI for an autumn block calving herd. Um, now, it's made easier for those herds that are crossbreeding because we compare the bulls against each other directly. And we know that there is a, a higher proportion of farmers in a, in a block calving system that are crossbreeding, which is why we designed it that way. Uh, but ultimately, if you're pure breeding, uh, you can still use those indexes happily and just look at the bulls of, of interest to you. Um, or equally, um, if you're not fussed about which breed you're going to choose, then just look at the top SCI and ACI bulls and choose amongst those really to progress your herd forward. Uh, the second question about whether it makes any uh, difference whether those bulls have been tested specifically in those systems is uh, is no. Um, we, through Interbull, which is our international evaluation unit, uh, we look at how our bulls rank against other countries, and, and Interbull will automatically also take account of that when they express bulls on the UK base from, from uh, foreign bulls onto the UK scale. And what we know is actually that we look at individual traits, the, the ranking of let's say which bulls are doing very well for milk yields um, or not so well for milk yield is very similar between the various countries, uh, independent of what system they're operating. Where really the difference comes in is how we weight those, in the, or those individual traits within our economic indexes. And that's where the UK specific SCI or ACI come into their own. Um, so just the fact that they, they, um, well, they, they are proven, if you like, under a wide range of conditions, it doesn't really matter. Um, similarly, when it comes to genomic testing, obviously at that point, they haven't got any milking daughters yet, but the genomic information will tell us how those animals will perform in individual traits. Um, so it's uh, it's not something to be concerned about. Uh, we have done some work in the past to say, well, is there, do we see re-ranking of genetics that different bulls perform differently under different conditions? And really the evidence is, is not there to indicate uh, that the way we're progressing at the moment or, or uh, presenting the information to you is, is not valid. Um, so no, it's, it's valid information. Uh, you can trust the information. And we have also looked at well, how do females perform. So Furnace talked you through the SCI already. And when we look at herds that are block calving and we look at their highest SCI females within those herds uh, versus the worst SCI females within a spring block calving system in the UK, it very clearly shows that in terms of milk yield, there's not a lot of difference. The high SCI, low SCI are fairly similar, but really where it comes into their own is that the, the high SCI bulls are much, much, or high SCI cows, I should say, are much, much better in fat percent, protein percent, are better in somatic cell count and also better in fertility. And really the SCI works and, and we've shown that it, it can work in the UK system. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Marco. Um, next question is from Rachel, um, asking where is the calf survival data collected from? Okay, so calf survival we get directly at the moment from BCMS. And so we pick up animals that have received an ear tag and then die before they're uh, 10 months of age. And so we know exactly at what time they die or get taken out of the system. 
we have got some provisions in there for herds where we see a, a higher proportion of animals dying, uh, really to take account of some management effects, if you like. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, we haven't got enough data that tells us about stillborn animals. So between uh, birth, if you like, and, and the first few days of life, uh, but we are working our, our we are We'll be talking about that project actually tomorrow to see if we can uh, initiate a project in the UK to look at that data because um, NMR have been rec recording some of that data in their system and we hope that that uh, can allow us to also come up with a stillbirth index. Okay, thank you. Um, question from Charlie asking, uh, how can we rank individual cows on a a a SCI and ACI? Fern, you want to take that? Um, yeah, so um, if you've got access to uh, your herd genetic report, you'll be able to rank um, your your cows um, by SCI if you select that option um, in the, the main landing page. Um, your young stock will be in a, a separate report just because there's slightly different information how, how we well, different information that we show there. So the young stocks got their their date of birth there rather than their their lactation shown. Um, ACI, um, you're not able to rank them on ACI just yet, but that will be a, a feature that um, will be available through the herd genetic report in December when we we do provide ACI for females. Um, if you don't have a herd genetic report then I'm afraid we, we can't do um, any ranking on SCI or ACI for, for females. It's just um, on the male side that we can kind of look at the genetic merit that's that's gone into your herd. Okay, thank you, Fern. And question from Mark next. Um, are you working with Holstein UK to change type scores within the Holstein base so as to penalise taller, narrow bulls, which tend to be higher type bulls? Uh, so, yeah, we do work with Holstein UK. So we um, we actually do the evaluations for, um, for type for all of the breeds, including Holsteins. Uh, but the makeup of the type merit is really something that's controlled by the breed societies themselves. So Holson UK uh, has got a committee that's reviewed the type merit uh, recently. Uh, the last update introduced, they already started to penalize some of the taller bulls because uh, clearly they, they also recognize that that is not something that's desirable for the breed. And similarly, they, they have also put a bit of em extra emphasis on chest width uh, to get that back into the breed. Um, so we work with them, uh, but ultimately the, the makeup of the index is decided by the breed society. Okay, right. We haven't had any more questions in. If anybody's got anything lastly, just to kind of round up, then let us know now. Um, just uh, wanted to say a big thank you for everybody who joined us this evening. And thank you to Marco and Fern. Um, Thank you for all of your expertise. It's been a really smooth presentation and um, and lots of points to take away. So thank you for putting together such a good um, session for this evening. Um, if you wanted to ask any further questions, if there's something that comes up from this evening, then please get in touch with us and we'll be happy to answer. Um, just to let you know that the, the genetic, uh, Amy's just asked about the genetic calculator. I think I'm not sure if would that be the herd genetic reports or the optimal dairy systems calculator. Um, which do you think that would be, Marco and Fern, that AIM is referring to? What was the question on the calculator? Uh, where can we access the genetic calculator? Okay. I think that might be the optimal dairy systems one. So yeah. um, on the uh, optimal dairy systems section of the HDB dairy website, um, I think uh, from memory, you, there's a few options on the left hand side and you can select key performance indicators. And when you go to that page, you get shown um, all of the six key performance indicators for each of the uh, calving systems. And then on the right hand side, um, you've got uh, two links, one of which is the KPI calculator where you can input all six of your KPIs and see how you benchmark. Um, and then below that is a link to the genetic merit calculator. Um, I can always 
I don't know if we're able to maybe send the link around when we send out the link to the YouTube um, channel, but that, that could also be an option that we could look into for that one. Yep, that's fine. We can send that out afterwards and we've got Amy's email address as well to send that out. OK, and um, there was just one last quick question just from Mark about the um, the Holstein question. Um, he's just asked um, about chest, chest width is penalised on maintenance score. Um, so that was just to add on with what you were saying about um, the, the narrower balls. Is that something you could just add to quickly before we finish? Yeah, so uh, so maintenance is really is looking at live weight of the animal, and so one of the the concerns that I guess was raised by the industry was exactly this question to say, well, is it are we just breeding animals that are frailer or more angular and therefore have got lower body weights? Uh, and to really address that issue, we this this is exactly why we introduced the body condition score in part of the PLI uh, to offset maybe some of those concerns now. Although that is a concern from the industry, when we look at the overall trends of what is happening, that's that isn't actually what what we are seeing. We've, we see that the, um, the the smaller animal in terms of stature uh, really gets a preference. Chest width is a is a minor minor detail of the uh, overall maintenance index. So, although theoretically you could argue that that should be a concern, um, actually when we look at the overall bull uh, detail we don't see that it's more the uh, the statute that really we try to address with maintenance um, but as i say that the body condition score within the pli uh, out offsets uh, any concern that may still exist there okay and just on that quickly um bob has asked is S in sci is there a limit recommend um a limit recommended for reduction in maintenance well, ultimately, it's uh, it's weighted in, in an optimum index to say, well, the the higher the production, that you tend to get a slightly bigger animal. Um, now, really, what we're trying to do, especially within those spring block calving systems, is keep the animals as small as possible. So, the advice probably for you is then to say, well, look within that top SCI ranking, and and I talked earlier about maybe look at a minimum of 200 SCI, and then within those bulls you're looking for try to find the bulls that are as, as um, well, negative as possible, so really reduce your maintenance. But it is a bit of a personal preference. I know that um, well, some herds uh, prefer to keep a bit of size in their animal, uh, whereas other herds definitely want to, uh, to reduce it as much as possible. So the economic optimum we've in introduced through the SCI, within that you can make uh, individual selection pressures uh, to really address that one. OK, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. OK, then, everybody, we'll um, we'll sign it out there. So thank you very much. And um, if you've got any further questions, don't hesitate to contact us and um, we'll say good night then. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Fern. Thank you. Thank you.